Hi, I'm Maya from Book from Dreams and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about all the books I read in January. In January I read five books and I DNF'd one book. Uh, of those five books, three were a fantasy, one was a sci-fi and one was a, a western dystopian thing that I read. First, let's talk about the DNF, and that was Baker Thief by Claudie Arsenault. Uh, I read this part of uh, the fantasy Reddit bingo reading challenge thing for the prompt uh, to read a book with a aromantic uh, character, and um, I had high hopes for this. So this book is about two women, Adele and Claire. One is a policewoman and the other is a baker. And she, uh, the baker is also a thief. So sh uh, she goes around stealing people's exocores. And th those are like um, batteries. So they're like uh, promoted as energy of the future, but they're actually uh, like batteries made out of uh, witches' souls. And uh, Claire's sister disappears, you know, a apparently it turned into one of those and uh, Claire goes around trying to find out what's happening. So uh, I gave up at around 38% reading this book because I just wasn't interested in anything that was happening. I don't know, it, maybe it was the time of, you know, I wasn't in the mood to read something like that, but I just wasn't interested in anything in, in the characters, in the plot, in the, all the... Um, inclusion that was happening in this because this book is filled with uh, so many different kinds of characters and but I just I, I just didn't care <laughs> and you know after 30% I was like because I found myself skipping things while there was like explaining wh what was happening what the eggs of course were the sort of the history of the world so nothing was gripping me and I just sort of gave up so that was my DNF. I'm just going to briefly mention the two books that I've read this month, uh, together with Christina, uh, and that was uh, Assassin's Blade by uh, Sarah J. Maas. Yeah, I have lots of lots of uh, tabs on this one. Uh, so we, we read this for the Talk Along, or Throne of Glass Read Along. So this is a book by Sarah J. Maas. Uh, this is a, sort of a collection of a short, or short stories that uh, precedes the first book, in which we get to know Selena, uh, our main character in this whole series, uh, and how she got to the events of the first book. Uh, uh, Christina and I will be doing a sort of dedicated review to this, so look forward to, for, to that, so I'm not gonna expand here uh, about this book. Uh, just to say, I, this was a reread for me, uh, and uh, things changed <laughs> since I read it for the first time, but yeah, I enjoyed it but you'll hear more of it in the review. Uh, the other book that Christina and I will review together is Upright Women Wanted. This is the Western dystopian thing that I read by Sarah Gailey. Um, in this book, we follow uh, uh, Esther who runs away from her family uh, because uh, she just lost her lover um, uh, because she lives in a fascist country and you know they hate everything that's not uh, heteronormative. And, um, she wants to join the librarians, which is apparently a traveling group, not group, a traveling, they, they travel around uh, the United States, um, uh, sharing books and stuff, you know, but you'll hear more about it in an interview. The first book I actually finished in January, uh, I actually started reading in November. <laughs> so this is uh, The Sword of Kagan by M.L. Wang. This is uh, epic military fantasy book uh, and this was a self-published book actually so if you get a chance to definitely check it out because it's amazing I gave it five I gave it four stars I think yes I gave it four stars because the ending was okay so in this book we follow the uh, Matsuda family uh, as they uh, face an incursion by a very dangerous enemy uh, they live in a part of the land which is called the Sword of Kagan which has uh, uh, is that part of the fantasy land it has always been used to protect the kingdom. And in this book we follow as the families of that land uh, prepare, well not prepare, but how they live and um, how they react to a sudden incursion by the enemy and actually what happens after, you know, the enemy, the battle is over and, and, and how the, 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 the empire helps you. Or doesn't it's, it's it was such a great read uh i think this will be great for everybody who loves military fantasy because the battles were so well described and i was so into it usually when you read battle i when i read battles i sometimes check out i'm like okay so they're fighting he won whatever let's move on but this was so well described you could follow um 
every character that was involved and what's happened to them. And it was, it, it was gripping. It was just great. It was amazing. Uh, another thing I love about this uh, book that we had uh, sort of uh, a couple of main characters. One of them was a teenager. Uh, so the beginning of the book, actually, which focused more on the teenager, um, had this sort of YA feel. But you were like, okay, let's see what you know what happens next. And the other main character we follow is the teenager's mother, and uh, we rarely follow like an older female character uh, in fantasy books. So, um, and she uh, basically uh, has a very interesting background because when she was younger, as we found out reading in the book, um, she was part of a sort of a vigilante group in one of the bigger cities in the empire. Uh, she fought, uh, I guess, the criminals of the city and such. And so when she married into this, you know, traditional, um, famous, uh, I want to say military, military family, yes, uh, she sort of had to change. And when we follow her in the book, she's um, starting to not remember, but sort of recall all the things that doesn't mean to remember. But, you know, as she's, she's suddenly reminded of her past and she's trying to sort of um, merge the two and trying to figure out how to help her son and her family deal with the ongoing situation. Um, yeah, uh, the reason this book has four stars, <laughs> because everybody says, and it's true, I was like, while I was reading reviews and, and watching reviews for this book, the ending is very strange. Uh, later I found out, my dog is somewhere outside, uh, later I found out that the author tried to sort of connect this book to her previous work, and her pre previous uh, work is a sort of a YA fantasy series about, I think, a, a military school of some sort, and um, yeah, the ending was kind of weird, but the middle part, the beginning, the beginning was kind of YA, but the middle part and, and the sort of uh, consequences of battle and what happens after that, mm -hmm. just immediately after that, uh, is just such, it was such a joy to read and it was so entertaining. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it to anyone. You should definitely give this book a try, you know, maybe skip the last chapter. But other than that, everything is awesome. Uh, the next fantasy I want to talk about, I finished. Finally, I finished Peace Talks by uh, Jim Butcher. Uh, this is book 16 in the Dresden Files. I've uh, Christina got me this book, like, I think in October. And mm -hmm. since October, I was like, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this because I'm excited. I love the Dresden Files. I, I'm just so excited to get on with it. And I finally did in uh, January. So in book 16, uh, since this is book 16 in the Dresden Files series, I'll just tell you what the Dresden Files are and just a little bit about the book. So the Dresden Files is a, a long-lasting since this book 16, uh, urban fantasy series in which we follow Harry Dresden, who doesn't look like this, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, who, he's a wizard in Chicago and he, you know, advertises his wizardry in Chicago and he sells his services as a private investigator. That's how the series starts. So now, since this is book 16, the world has expanded. We have so many characters uh, and this is urban fantasy. So we have many fantastical characters like vampires, angels, demons, um, uh, werewolves, wizards, there's like the White Council of Wizards, there's so many things that's happening. But in this book, the all the supernatural factions of the city area, uh, there's also fairies, I just remembered, uh, are coming together for peace talks because they have been sort of either secretly battling each other or together sometimes battling this huge, huge, um, dangerous enemy. So they have arranged peace talks so they can, you know, come together and talk about the thing. And uh, Harry... Uh, has been uh, tapped by the White Council of Wizards to work as security or provide security for the talks so they could, you know, happen more peacefully. But if you read a Harry Dresden book, that doesn't happen. Uh, and what I loved about this book, I gave it five stars, by the way. Um, what I loved about this book, because we got to see and and uh, the char a character we haven't seen in a while, which is Thomas. And I was just wondering, before I started reading it, oh, we haven't heard from Thomas in a while. And then I got a book with Thomas in it, and which was great. Um... Uh, what I loved about this, because um, Jim Butcher has a specific way of writing things, and uh, his books, Dresden books especially, are filled with humor, action, they're fast-paced, and it was very easy to get into, and it was very easy to get invested, and the reason I gave this book five stars because there's a thing that happens, like here, <laughs> in which we meet our bad guy, that's going to be, I guess, a bad guy for a couple of books, and one of the more... Um, formidable and intimidating and just everyone's afraid of them character and their sort of conversation 
that happened into it. And so it was so, it's so spoiler, I can't tell you anything, but it was so amazing. I was reading, I was listening to this on audiobook, by the way, uh, and reading, uh, following along in the book as well. Uh, the audiobook is read by James Masters and he's amazing. And you definitely, if you, if, if you get a chance to uh, experience his books through audiobook, definitely do that because it, he just does a wonderful performance and he's definitely awesome. And um, what was I saying before that? Oh my God, I lost my train of thought. Something about, anyway, I lost my train of thought, so I, I kind of, I don't know what I was talking about. But anyway, I enjoyed this book very much. I gave it five stars. Uh, if you need something like a palate cleanser between reading a humongous uh, f a fantasy series, I know a lot of read-alongs are happening right now, definitely pick this one up because, uh, you know, it's an easy read. It's fun. Uh, just, you know, read this. Uh, and the last book I want to talk to you about is the sci-fi that I read, and this is John Scalzi's The Collapsing Empire. This is book one in his The Interdependency Trilogy. And in this world, universe, that we that the, that the story is set in, uh, the Earth has expanded and colonized the universe. But they did it uh, with help of um, sort of wormholes, uh, uh, sort of like a space highway, which is called the Flux. Uh, these are like a, uh, uh, basically a, a thing, pathway through universe, different uh, different parts of the universe um, where, you know, uh, humans have either uh, occupied some planets or uh, built like um, a station or whatever to live in the space, the colonized. Anyway, uh, as in anything, uh, this highway is, and the whole universe is um, ruled over by an empire. But it's not an empire, it's like a, it's a something. Well, it's an empire, but it's more like you have an emperor who is sort of a figurehead, but not a figurehead. And then there's like a console of everything and anything. Anyway, in this book, we follow a couple of characters. The, the main plot of this book is that the highway is shutting down. So certain pathways to certain planets are shutting down and humans are getting uh, cut off from the empire and their source of, uh, and their, you know, source of everything. Um, and uh, we follow a couple of characters, first of all. My favorite female character, the new one, because she's fucking amazing, is Lady Kiva. She is um, a part of uh, one of the more influential families in this empire. And she's foul-mouthed and she's just so capable and she's so badass and she's smart and she can deal with everything that's happening. And uh, her, her current job is she's like a representative of her house uh, on a um, spaceship uh, it's like it's not a transport, but it's uh, one of those um, trading spaceships. So she goes around on the space highway and trades the stuff her family produces, I guess. And you know she deals with space pirates and she deals with so many awesome things. Uh, so we follow one of uh, she, we follow her perspective. Another perspective we follow is of the new empress. In the beginning of the first chapter, the emperor dies and his daughter. Um, sort of uh, inherits his position and you know we see how she is uh, dealing with everything that's happening and the amount of assassination attempts that are happening in this book is just ridiculous um <laughs> and the third uh point of view that we are following is of i cannot well, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, he is a son of a scientist. He's also a flux scientist. So the flux is the space highway thing. Um, he's a flux scientist who is, you know, who has now, who whose father has been studying the whole, you know, the highway dying thing. And he's he's been tasked with um, getting the information to the empress, uh, emperor, because he didn't know the emperor died. Um, uh, and, you know, trying to, you know, somehow help people and stuff. Uh, and there's also like um, a rebellion happening on a planet of on the planet called the End, uh, which is you know, it's it's everything is so connected and everything's so political and there's like so many things happening. But um, I also listened to this on audio. It was narrated by Will Wheaton. He does a lot of John Scalzi's books, and he's really good at it. Um, the same thing that I think about Jim Butcher's writing, I think about John Scalzi's John Scalzi's writing. He writes science fiction that is easy to understand and easy to follow. Uh, it's fun. There's humor. There's action. There's always something happening. I was never bored reading this. Uh, I always, I was always wondering what's going to happen, and I really enjoyed reading this book. Uh, I gave it four stars. And uh, yeah, I've definitely, I'm. I wanted to just immediately finish the series. That's how much I loved it. But I was like, no, I have a bunch of other things to read. Of course, most of them I didn't. Uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah, um, 
Um, I enjoyed this book a lot. Uh, definitely would recommend for f f uh, fans of uh, uh, science fiction and anybody who wants science fiction that's not like um, that, that's easy to understand and easy to really it's immersive and it's enjoyable and uh, definitely uh, pick this one up. Well, that's it for my January wrap up. Uh, if you've read all, any of the books that I have, please do let me know down below. Uh, you, if you want to share all the books that you've read in January, please do down below in the comments. Uh, there are some uh, links to world issues and stuff that's happening in Croatia down below in the description box. If you can check them out, please do. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. You can share, uh, subscribe to our channel. I will leave the link to Christina's uh, wrap up somewhere here and um, yeah that's it thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye